Welcome to the lab. This is the Big Scientist channel where we explore the why so you know how. In honor of Black History Month, we are baking up delicious treats that I grew up with and are popular in the African American community. Today, we will be exploring the why behind soft, fluffy, tangy pineapple upside down cake so you know how to bake one in your own kitchen. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all delicious science. Now let's get into it. So to start off our pineapple upside down cake, the first thing we're going to want to do is get our buttermilk ready. And I'm using a buttermilk substitute, which you can actually find in our butter, Morning Science Buttermilk Pancake video. Um, there's a good detailed explanation on the science behind buttermilk and how to make it. So please check that out. Uh, we want to make this be before we start doing everything else because it does take a minute to get the buttermilk together correctly. And I actually am going to be adding a little bit of the pineapple juice to my buttermilk. Uh, as pineapple juice is a little bit acidic, it does help with the making of the buttermilk, but it also will add a little bit of that pineapple flavor to the cake itself. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that in and then we're going to move on to the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and spray down our pan and you just need either a cast iron skillet or a nine inch round pan for this. It's a pretty small cake. It's a quick, quick uh, dessert. So it's pretty easy, all one pan. So I just like to spray it down just to make sure nothing sticks when we're done. Cause you want that beautiful reveal when you finish your pineapple upside down cake. So next we're going to go ahead and add um, some melted butter to the pan and this is going to be the basis of the topping. So the topping on a caramel cake or uh, sorry, a pineapple upside down cake is usually like a caramel topping with your pineapples and marchino cherries in there. And that caramel topping, we're going to actually, we're not going to cook it separately. We're just going to go ahead and do everything in the same pan. So we're going to add our brown sugar to the butter and we're going to just uh, sp sprinkle it all around and make sure it's incorporated in the butter. Now once all the brown the brown sugar is in the pan and it's all even and all it's all on top of all the butter, we're going to go ahead and add our pineapples and our maraschino cherries. And you want to make sure that your pineapples and cherries are dry since this is canned pineapple. Um, I do want to make sure they're dried off so I just pull them out of the, the liquid, put them on some paper towels and let them dry off a little bit because you don't want any excess moisture to weigh down your cake or make your cake soggy or your um, caramel sauce liquidy. So we'll just pat them dry and then we're going to arrange them in the pan. You can do any kind of shapes you want. You can cut up the pineapple rings and make little designs, whatever you want to do to make it look pretty. You can do that. I just like, I like the look of the whole pineapple rings and then up the sides, I'll do half a pineapple ring all, all around the sides and then I'll just put the cherries throughout. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to decorate it and then we'll move on to our next step. Now that we have our tray looking nice and beautiful, we can go ahead and move on to our actual cake science. For this pineapple upside down cake, we're actually using cake flour, which we have a video, our oatmeal cookie video, which goes into detail about the different flours and how to make a substitute cake flour, which is what I'm using here. So please check that out if you haven't already. Now the important thing to understand about flour is there's many different kinds of flour and there's reasons why we use cake flour. So cake flour actually has a lower protein content than other flours. And this is important because the protein content of flour reflects the amount of gluten in your flour. 
When your flour is mixed with water, the flour proteins um, actually form gluten. So for cakes especially, we want to make sure that our gluten content is low because we don't want a tough rubbery cake. One thing we can do to mitigate having a tough cake is to use a cake flour like we're using here, our cake flour substitute. And a second thing, which is a uh, interesting, is called reverse creaming. Now reverse creaming um, is another method of mixing together your cake batter. And um, if you've watched our caramel cake video, you'll see what a regular cake pro creaming process is for cake. Now reverse creaming is different than that. In reverse creaming, we actually um, add our oil and our butter, so our fats, to the dry mixture instead of the sh creaming it with the sugar as you would in your regular cake making. Now the reason for this is um, because the idea is that if we were to add, if we add our fats to our dry ingredients, the fats will coat the flour protein molecules, thus reducing their ability to interact with the water that we're adding to our batter. And in doing so, we limit the amount of uh, gluten that is formed because, as I mentioned previously, gluten is formed when water protein or when flour proteins are interact with water. So if we can mitigate the amount of water that's interacting with our flour by coating the flour in, in uh, fat, which is not compatible with water, then we reduce the amount of gluten developed, in addition to us using our cake flour. And because we aren't aerating our uh, butter and uh, we're just uh, adding the butter and the oil to our flour, we're uh, introducing less air into the batter, which will give us a flatter um, kind of cake. And it'll it'll reduce the doming or rise of the cake which is is good for our pie upside down cake because there's no we don't really need a big rise we want a flat top because we have all these toppings already that we're going to have on top so that's fine and then it also gives a finer crumb because there's no large air pockets and this is important because this will help the cake um, sustain all those ingredients we put in there like the pineapples the maraschino cherries and the caramel sauce that we're creating that's all heavy and we don't want our cake to sink we don't want it to absorb too much liquid and become soggy either so it being uh, denser is actually really good um, but the crumb will still be fine and tender and have a velvety kind of texture to it It'll be ultra fine which is exactly what we want uh, we want a nice soft um, delicious cake but we also want it to be stable enough where it's not going to get soggy with all of our toppings so this reverse creaming and cake flour is really the way to go for this so I've already added the buttermilk and the eggs I added the eggs to the buttermilk and I just poured all of that in and right now we're just mixing it up to get our smooth batter and then we'll add in our vanilla as the last uh, liquid ingredient Okay, now that we have a nice smooth batter, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So we're gonna get our prepared pan and just pour the batter right on in. Just pour it right on over the pineapple and the marshmallow cherries and the caramel. Just make sure you get it all in there. So now that we have all of our batter in, it's ready to go ahead and go in the oven. And I'm placing my uh, cake on a secondary tray just because it, it could bubble over. Um, but you want to bake this at 350 for about 45 minutes. 
uh, and or until a toothpick comes out clean. So now my cake is ready. And now I'm gonna flip it over for the big reveal. So let's see how this turned out. Go ahead and flip it over. Wiggle it a little bit, tap it, whatever you gotta do. Make sure all of that goodness comes out. And here it is, our pineapple upside down cake. Looks beautiful. So here it is, our final result. A beautiful, delicious, caramely, tangy, sweet pineapple upside down cake. So let's go ahead and cut a piece and see what we have. As you can see, it's nice and soft and fluffy, cutting it. And see, it's a nice fluffy piece of cake. Uh, it's not soggy from the toppings. It held up like it's supposed to. And here it is, our final result. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all our science. And until next time, happy baking!